was made for me by my granddaughter. B. B O B Bob. That's me. So we're all set. So I just go. We're on. Okay, everybody. Welcome to what are we calling this program? I don't even know. Puppy dog tales. Puppy dog tales. Very good. I forgot. Okay, and um, to, today we brought along a real puppy dog who's Millie over here. She's not really a puppy, she's a grown-up dog. <laughs> and she likes stories. She also likes children. She likes my stories. Yeah. And I mean, she, she likes... She likes... And look, like, like, okay. okay, so kids, to, to, to get us started today, I'm going to read a story. A, it's a true story about Millie telling a story. This is about Millie telling a story. And the name of the story is Millie and I... Okay, you got to listen, kids. Millie and I take a walk, and it's a true story. Ho-hum. Ho-hum, like, oh, Millie said as she stretched her long black front legs and looked me right in the eye. She's not doing that right now. It is, she says... It's time for my afternoon walk. Let's go. <laughs> well, just a minute, Millie dear, I said. I am writing a story now on my computer. I'll take you for a walk just as soon as I'm finished. That's what I said to Millie. Grr, growled Millie. What's more important, your story or me, your own dear dog? Okay, I said, here's an idea. Millie, you tell me a story now. I'll type it out, and then we will go for a walk together. <laughs> Fine, Millie said. Here is my story. Okay, Dad, you and I were walking in the woods the other day. You let me off the leash. All of a sudden, I smelled a delicious deer. Ah, mm, it came from just over the hill in front of us. I no, ran, I, I no, ran, I, I ran toward it as fast as I could. You yelled for me to come back, but I didn't. It was too much fun. Great, gorgeous fun. I barked. Woof, woof. That's what Millie said. Woof, woof. I saw the deer. It was little, a cute, brown, spotted baby deer. But it was scared. It, the deer was scared, so it ran away. Wait, I barked. Don't be afraid. I never, never, never eat deer, I lied. I only love to chase them. Deer are fun to chase because they run fast and jump over logs and bushes. I run after them. When we get tired, we lie down together and tell stories to each other. My very best friends are baby deer. So the baby deer, whose name was Gus, ran up to me and we danced together for an hour and a quarter. We didn't have a radio or an iPhone, so I sang like this. Oh, oh, that's Millie singing. That's my way of telling you how Millie was singing. Just then, the mommy and daddy deer showed up, galloping full speed and looking very worried. Get away from our darling little child, you bad, 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 extremely bad, dangerous dog, they shouted, or we will call the police. But the baby, children, listen, but the baby deer said, Oh, Mommy, oh, Daddy, this is just Millie. She's my very best friend. You don't need to be afraid. She is a fine animal and the greatest dog dancer in the whole world. Gus and I, this is still Millie talking, 
Gus and I met in the woods many times after that. Our dancing became so beautiful that we were invited to many children's birthday parties. And that is my story, said Millie. So off we went, Millie and I, for a very nice afternoon walk together. That's the story. Do you like the story? It, it's, it's a true story, really, it happened. Okay, now we have a couple of other story readers. Each time we meet here, we have different story readers, hopefully. So today we're going to first have Jeannie, Jeannie Robbins. Come over, Jeannie. And I have some questions, though. I have questions for the children because this is the first time I've done it. And I'd like to know, do your parents have any rules for you? Does, do, are any of you told to do or not to do some things by your parents? Uh, did we all hear that and understand it? So the cats know that you know that the cats have rules. And do the cats know the rules and usually follow them? Oh, good, good. Does anybody else have rules that they at home? And how does, she, what are her rules about those sharp things? Do you, you, you eat them yourselves? Do your parents follow your rule? Do your parents follow that rule? Do your parents follow that rule? Okay. And do you have any rules for your parents? That if you do something right, do, do they make any promises to you? I guess not. Uh, my next question is, and don't hurt Millie's feelings, what is your favorite animal? Does anybody have a favorite animal that isn't a dog? All right. Does anybody have a favorite that is not a dog? We all love doggies best. Yeah, that's a that's a baby dog. And do you have a favorite animal that isn't a dog or that is a dog? I don't have animals. You don't have an animal, but in your head, do you, is there one that you like to read in a book about? Most. Okay. Well, my dogs, I had dogs and they were pretty much my favorite animal and they had rules. Uh, and the two dogs that I'm going to talk to you about were great big poodles. A black poodle and uh, he, well, I'll tell you about his accident later and a white poodle, and they were very big. And the white poodle slept in my room, and the black poodle, uh, she slept on an old thing. They learned to sleep until I taught them. They're very smart poodles. And I taught them not to wake me up until my eyes were open. And 
They learned that and never did. But they wished my eyes opened earlier. Uh, so then one of them, the black poodle was named uh, Truffle, and he had an accident. He was attacked outside by a wild animal that broke his leg, and I took him to the veterinarian, and the veterinarian said, he, he said it, and he said he'd be good, but he had to keep his leg straight for a month and be very careful. And he hadn't been allowed to sleep up in my room before because he didn't have a, a desire to leap up on my bed. <laughs> and so he was put in a leash, and I carried him upstairs to my bedroom. So he was in the same room with Clico, the other dog. And she knew she couldn't wake up until my eyes were open, or she got put in the old doghouse for the day. <laughs> and it was an old doghouse that wasn't a palace at all. And so he came up, and I put him on the edge of I carried him up and laid him on the bed so that he wouldn't, couldn't fall off and hurt his broken leg anymore. And they all went to sleep. But a week after I brought them up, only seven days later, the dog who had his broken thing and was sleeping on my bed, retracted and very gently opened my eyes. And what do you think happened next? Um, me, me, what? um, drive and crash into a car. No, they weren't driving a car. But what happened next is the white poodle jumped jumped off the bed and licked my face to wake me up because my eyes were open and that was she had obeyed my rules. So could I punish them and say, bad dog? No. No, that would have been not fair. If your mama and daddy make a promise, do they keep their promise to you? The way you keep your promises to them? No. Okay. But they were happily ever after my dogs, and they loved each other, and they got along with everybody outside because they felt safe together. And if you make a promise, you want to keep it. Yay! And that's my story. It only took them four days to do this, to somehow or other talk quietly to each other in a language I couldn't understand. I didn't, it was just little soft sounds, but they understood. And one told the other that wait till he licked my face and then she wouldn't be punished. And that's my story. And I can tell you other stories, too, when you want them, if you want them. I, I can tell you stories about how dangerous it can be if you think you know about animals, and it turns out you don't, because my husband got into a pickle one day. But we'll see if Bob wants me to tell it at any time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jeannie. Are we on? Yes. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, kids. Thank you, kids. Um, now, our next storyteller, Millie, you got to be listening. You got to listen, Millie. You got to listen. Okay. The next storyteller is uh, Bobby Gulick, and she's going to read you a story. Okay? And Millie is going to listen too. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. 
Well, this is a story I thought you'd like for Thanksgiving because it says, my grandma is wonderful. Are, uh, will some of you see your grandmas for Thanksgiving? Yes. Oh, that was, and, and, and have a wonderful dinner with your grandma? Okay, there she is sitting in a chair. That's grandma. She looks like she's a lot of fun, doesn't she? My, my grandma is wonderful. Yeah, there she is. She always buys the biggest ice cream cones. Who here likes ice cream? Does anybody here like ice cream? Oh, yay. And she never, ever loses a tic-tac-toe. There she is. Look, they're playing in the sand. They're drawing with a stick, playing a game in the sand. She's a clever grandma. And she knows all about nature. Do you watch the birds sometimes? No. Oh, you should just be quiet. Look out the window and you'll see lots of nice birds. And she's great at untying knots. That's kind of fun, isn't it? Um, why did you all laugh? Uh, I don't know, but look who's got the knot. Who's that? Who's that in the, uh, with a knot? It's Kitty. <laughs> Kitty, Kitty. Looks like Kitty. Looks like Kitty likes to get into Grandma's knitting. Now we have, she's always on your side when things go wrong. What's happened? A toy got broken and she's helping them by taking the toy to the man and hopes that it can be fixed. So that's Grandma helping with a toy. The box says it's a robo toy. That Goodness knows what that means. Maybe it's a wind-up toy. Here, and she makes the most beautiful clothes. Does that make you think of Halloween? Yeah. Maybe she can make Halloween costumes. Yeah. yeah. And when you're sick, she can make you forget that you don't feel very good. No. No, it's not good to be sick, is it? We have to wash our hands a lot, take Bella good care. Bella was super sick last day. Yeah. And I went to a hospital to get some medicine. Oh, wow. Well, that was good and to I have medicine and get all better. And she can scream really loudly. My goodness, they're on a big ride. They're on a ride, and they're all shouting. What, what is that ride? Well, who knows? A roller coaster. I know. This looks a little bit scary. And she has excellent hearing. So look at this picture and see what's happening. Can you see what's happening in this picture? Yeah, wow, the children are up past their bedtime and Grandma's looking at her watch and she says, oh, it's time for you to be asleep. And no matter where you are, she always has what you need in her pocketbook. Isn't that nice? Yeah. It's great to have a grandma like mine. <laughs> so grandma's getting a cup of tea from somebody dressed in a costume. Isn't that funny? I bet she likes that. Most grandmas like a cup of tea. So that's the story of my grandma is wonderful. Well, are we ready? So, thank you very much, Bobby. How about we'll say thank you, Bobby, by clapping. Yay! And, and we'll say thank you to Jeannie, who also uh, told a nice story. Thank you, Jeannie! Yay! And now we have to thank Millie for being very good. She didn't actually, Millie didn't tell a story. 
But I t she told me the story, and then I told you the story, so we have to thank Millie, too. Okay, one, two, three. Yay! Okay, and then you've got to thank me for reading Millie's story to you. One, two, three. Thank you, Bob! Yay! Okay, and now we have to thank all of you kids and your teachers for coming to our show. So one, two, three. Yay! Okay. Millie, you're not clapping. What's the matter with you? She's wagging. Well, she's wagging her tail. She likes this scene here. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again sometime. Goodbye. <laughs>